Today we will explore different tools and techniques for managing stress and achieving work-life balance. We are joined today by Brian Madigan, who will be discussing the healing form Huna Reiki and African Ifa with relation to work-related stress. And later in the show, we will be joined by Shakiba Ahani, who will help us understand how we can strive to achieve work-life balance. Our first guest, Brian Madigan, has over 30 years of spiritual practice and shamanic journeying experience. During that time, he has trained and practiced divination, Reiki Huna healing, Shiatsu and neuro-linguistic programming. Brian has a rich and diverse skill set, which he uses to engage his clients in their own healing and spiritual journeys. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you, Jivian. Thanks for having me. Brian, tell me a little bit about why you do the work that you do. You do a lot of work in work-related stress, so tell me a little bit about your background. Um, at the ripe old age of about 15, I started exploring alternative spirituality, and eventually through that exploration, it led me to Hawaii and to Huna, and there's a very strong healing component within that shamanic system. And okay. it got me interested in healing myself and interested in the idea of healing other people. And through that whole period, I was working in a, in a very high-stressed IT corporate job that I was doing until about three years ago. Okay. Uh, very stressed out and understanding you know, that lack of work-life balance and that constant focus on work and what that was doing to my life. And so when I decided to leave the corporate world and, and start doing this kind of work, mm -hmm. uh, it was really important to me to reach out to the people who were in that position who may not have the tools that, mm. uh, that they would need to manage that stress so they can start having better lives. Perfect. Brian, where do you where do you think stress comes from? Like why are we so stressed? You know, I think I think there's a, a lot of lack of confidence. There's a lot of lack of center that happens. We get pulled in a lot of directions and we do things for a lot of reasons that aren't necessarily our own. And I think that really is a source particularly of work-related stress. Many people are in jobs they don't like or in jobs they're doing because obviously the reality of having to earn money to make a living, mm -hmm. but they've never really considered what they want, what would make them happy and what would give them a fulfilling life as well as, you know, put a roof over their head and put food on their table. Of course. And it almost seems like when you when you think about the things that make you happy, for some reason or another, they may not support the finances. So therefore, you're yeah. doing something else to support finances versus something else you'd be happy doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, if we think about stress, uh, is there a physiological response in stress as well? Like, are there behaviors that we would see or symptoms that we would see? There are a lot of physiological responses that happen with stress, and, and um, they've been broken down by by um, a lot of a lot of psychologists into basically four kinds of categories okay. and at level one they're the little things little little annoyances a little bit of a short temper things that the person might not even really notice at level two we start to see more increasing symptoms um, pains in the neck and the shoulders and the back typically sometimes in the hips we'll start to see more frequent headaches as the immune system sort of starts to get slightly compromised we'll see people get sick more often okay. when you move into phase three these things start to become chronic start to become more and more pronounced you'll start to see things like high blood pressure mm -hmm. and really more dangerous physical symptoms are starting to happen at that point we also see a loss of emotional control okay. so that you know the typical stressed out worker who's just you know having a fit at the office or yes. doing something like that. In phase four, these things can actually get quite scary. Quite serious physical conditions have been either related directly to or are worsened by stress. Mm -hmm. um, heart attacks, stroke, um, again, violent, violent uh, kinds of reactions or depression, depression mm -hmm. you know, all of these kinds of things are worsened and sometimes actually caused by stress. And the primary source of stress for almost anyone in North America is going to be the workplace. Brian, how do you how do you look at those signs early on? Like, how do you identify that? Oh, it seems like I'm stressed. I think it's really important for people to to understand their baseline. You know, we all have different kinds of personalities. So if you tend to be a really really calm kind of easygoing person, and all of a sudden you're losing your temper every once in a while that's probably a good sign that there's something going on in terms of stress. Okay. If you're a little bit more high strung, you know, you, you have to sort of look at what's my baseline, what's normal for me, mm -hmm. and if I'm starting to push above that baseline, mm -hmm. either emotional reactions or even feelings inside or possibly physical symptoms, you know, like a racing heart or panic, anxiety, depression, any of these kinds of things can be a sign that you're starting to suffer from the stress. You know, okay. if we look at stress almost like there's a threshold, everyone has 
an individual threshold. As we push above that threshold, that's when we start to see the symptoms happening. And we want to catch it just as it's hitting above the threshold so the person can learn to manage and keep things below the threshold so that they can be happy and healthy. Hmm, okay. Brian, when people call you as a, as a, a practitioner, mm -hmm. um, would I call you and say, hi, Brian, I'm stressed? That's what many people do. Okay. <laughs> many people call and say, hi, I think I'm having problems at work. I'm stressed out at work. I'm not happy in my job. I, you know, I don't okay. know what to do is often, uh, often a question that they'll ask as well. And that, that initiates a conversation about, you know, what are you doing now? You know, okay. what are you doing to manage the stress? What do you know about stress and how to manage the stress? Just to sort of start getting people thinking about their stress and understanding that they can do something about it. Now, some may argue that that's just day-to-day -day life, that things are getting busier, your work life is getting busier, there's more things to manage, you have more things to manage at home. Um, so what would you say to those people? That's absolutely true. And I think the, the approach that we need to take in terms of managing our lives, and I certainly, I think one of the things I bring to the table is having been in that corporate environment, I get that, mm -hmm. um, is that we need tools not to stop that busyness, because I don't think that busyness is necessarily going to stop, but to be able to manage what's going on within that business to have tools to calm ourselves down and keep ourselves in a in a good state which actually will make us more effective at doing all of those things so you're saying that it is it's realistic to say that in a group of of uh, a work-related setting, for example, where there's a really high buzz, things are going really quickly, that you as an individual can make the choice to stay calm. Absolutely. Okay. To, and, and from that calm foundation, it, and this is a very difficult thing f to, for people to get their heads around, but as people start to practice things like breathing or meditation, as they get the support from Huna Reiki and the different kinds of things that I do, they start to calm down and okay. they start to realize that that task list now becomes much more manageable. They are more able to prioritize, more able to choose those things that are more important for them to do. And they actually end up being more effective and getting more done in their life, mm -hmm. rather than being under that constant stress and constantly, you know, people get moving from place to place and thing to thing and they can't actually keep focused on getting something done. Mm -hmm. Now, Brian, if I was a calm person and I had a list of 35 things, and that's my regular task list, mm -hmm. and I have a leader whose expectations are those, those 35 things need to be done. Yep. So even prioritizing them may bring the first five things to the top. And I may prioritize the first five and think, okay, the latter 30 can wait. But yet my boss is still saying, the 35 things need to be complete by five o'clock. Right. So then, what do I do as a, a, an employee? I think, again, that calm foundation is a very important thing. You know, and as a manager and a people manager, which I also did for most of my career, mm -hmm. if you go into a typical good manager and you say, okay, so this is the task I have in front of me. This is the amount of time I think that all the things are going to take. Maybe there is time to do all of this, but if there isn't, what are really the most important things for you? I think that's okay. a very important conversation to have with your boss. What's important to you? Make okay. sure you understand really where their goals are and where their important things are. And to be very open when you feel like you just have too much to be able to do in the time slot that you have to do it in. Perfect. So, so it seems like there's a fair bit of planning as well, where you plan out the conversation with your leader yeah, or your boss. Right? I think so. And okay. It's like anything. It's like time management being yeah. a very important stress tool. You just have to be ready, know what it is that you need to say, and be in a space where you can be solid and say it from a very calm perspective and not necessarily go to the table saying, there's all these things wrong. I expect you, you're my boss, you need to fix them. Okay. It's about going in and saying, we can work on this together. I'm willing to fix these things. Go in with ideas about how things could work better. Brian, what sort of techniques or tools do you use to help people get to that state of calm? Well, I have kind of two approaches that I take, depending on sort of where the person is at in terms okay. of their stress management. The first being the Huna Reiki piece. Huna Reiki is all about energy, but it's about the internal energy system within the person. It, okay. it, it, it elicits an extreme state of very calm and peaceful energy. It allows emotional issues to start coming to the surface that need to get dealt with, and therefore builds that sort of an internal balance and a sort of internal sense of security.